I was looking for those haikus that I did the other day. God damn it. I got all my papers all mixed up. You want to copy these yourself up? And with the haikus, yeah. You got the one with the haikus? Is that a page of haikus there? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Yes. I had uh, one question to begin. I read. Yes. You start. You start. Uh, thank you for coming here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have both Robert Panera and Alan Ginsberg. Uh, we, in a specialized setting, our, our interpreter tra uh, training program, are beginning performing arts. So uh, this uh, is a wonderful way to begin that section of our program. Uh, <clears throat> Bob, teacher here uh, and a famous poet uh, himself. Uh, he published uh, a book called Silent Muse Anthology, which is a collection of deaf poetry in the 60s. Right? Uh, <clears throat> Allen Ginsberg uh, <coughs> published Howell, uh, and other poems in 1956. Uh, that particular book changed the whole idea, concept of poetry. Uh, and uh, both of these people have in common the idea that poetry is pictures. And for interpreters, that's really important, I think, because um, if you have that idea in mind, to see the picture uh, will help us all interpreting the poems. So, briefly enough, uh, let me present Robert Panera and Alan Ginsberg. So I had one question at the beginning. Uh, in the room, uh, who here is deaf? Uh, on this side? It's just, just a few of you. And most everybody hears. Everybody else is, is, uh, is learning a language. And among those deaf, uh, how many are deaf from birth? And how many became deaf but heard first? Because uh, I read an interview with Bob Pinero, a conversation between Jim Cohen and Mr. Pinero, uh, in which he said that since he was uh, deaf after the age of 10, he, could, he had some idea of sound poetry, and so like rhyme and meter, that was his symphony now. He started as a musician, or his father was a musician, and so he still retained the trace of music in it. Do you hear music in your head still? Oh, I have 
Many who have a high fever had 108 fever for 10 days and was in yeah. a comb. Well, something is still ringing in there all yeah. the time. Eh? So I always hear the bell. Eh? Yeah. <coughs> do, you, do you also imagine music in your head? Yes. I can turn on my uh, inner radio yeah. and bring back many of the melodies that I once could hear. Can you My father used to play the guitar yeah. Yeah, at home. Do you he used make to sing on a Saturday night when he came back from the Metropolitan Opera House listening to his favorite Enrico Caruso. He would come back singing all the time. Can you make up music in your head? I believe I have created some songs myself, but yeah. mm, not knowing how to write a uh -huh. score, mm, there's no way you can keep reproduce that. Uh -huh. uh, can you make up meters in your head? You make up poetry in your head. So do you hear? Do you hear? You hear it rhythmically in your head. <coughs> yes, really, Alan. That's why I developed an early love for poetry yes. after I became deaf. Poetry became a substitute for music for me. Mm -hmm. It yeah. also helped develop my vocabulary because of the rhymed ending of words. I didn't always have to go to the dictionary to find out how to pronounce the word. And because of the meter within the line. I uh -huh. would see where the accent fell on the first syllable or second syllable, the third really helped a lot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So those were for the words you did not learn before you were 10 years old. Uh, most of the words I learned after 10. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, there was, uh, how many here, uh, uh, heard before they became deaf, like Bob, Mr. Panera. Have you had the same? Have you had the same experience? Well, I still enjoy music if it's loud enough. Uh, can you can, I can hear some? Feel the beat inside myself. I can make some music. Yes, of course. Uh, you, if music is loud enough, you can you can hear the beat. How many uh, are deaf that had hearing, like yourself here? Can you raise your hand again? Two. And what is your experience? Um, I became deaf when I was three years old. So I really don't remember <coughs> much about my sound, but about the yeah. sound before. But same as what he was saying, yeah. if the music loud enough, I can feel the vibrations and enjoy that. Can you hear this? Uh, these are all straight. Yeah. No, you these are feel it <coughs> from the wooden floor. We have ah. a carpet over here. <laughs> yes, but I can imagine what that might sound like. I yeah. see. Yeah, it, I make my own sound for it. I create my I own see. Sound. These are Australian Aborigine song sticks, and this is the oldest form of poetry in the world. Uh, the Australian Aborigines. Um, feel it. <laughs> yeah, but sound very wooden to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. Huh? Uh, the Australian Aborigine method of poetry is based on rhythm made by knocking these sticks together. Uh, and th it is all oral pure sound, uh, not written down at all, and passed from generation to generation. And they mention animals which have been extinct for 12,000 years. 
So it's the oldest living culture <laughs> on the planet. And if longevity is a sign of sophistication, it's the most sophisticated culture on the planet. If historical memory is a sign of high culture. But their method was very simple, rhythmic, uh, repetition. Like the Congo. Yes. Very fair and very poor. Yes. <laughs> yes. For those, the, uh, for those of you who were born, de born deaf, have never heard anything, then no, nothing. Nothing. So, you do, do you hear music of some kind? No. No. Planes going over my head, <laughs> maybe. Really? But, so then, what is your conception of poetry or your experience of poetry? I enjoy reciting poetry in sign language, but I have no idea about that, that rhythm. Sound. I'm more fascinated with the words that the poetry Ex uses and extracts, bad, bad. and I want to translate those into sign language that seems equivalent to the words, <laughs> and to make it beautiful, and that's difficult. The, uh, in Maybe that's in, twen in twenty now to mm, <coughs> try to present one poem I wrote that maybe deals with this mm -hmm. topic. Yes. Quote, on his deafness. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe we get an idea of what Pat Grayball means when he can hear words uh, as they are read and signed. Uh, uh, -huh. uh, uh Pat Grayball is, uh, uh, uh... That's me? That's him. But, but uh, uh, he, he's, his... His, po his interest in poetry is for the visual or the idea rather than the sound. Now, there's no sound involved there. Purely picture an idea. Yes. Well, 20th century poetry is mostly picture and idea. So modern poetry, especially after Ezra Pound and William Carlos Williams, and the imagist poets should be the best, or is is almost specifically tailored for those who are deaf. Uh, Pound pointed out that poetry had three different aspects for him. One was sound, melopoeia. Then one was the dance of the intellect among the words, the wittiness, or the sophistication, or the uh, strangeness of funny words being put together, like the phrase Nazi milk. But the other uh, was the pure picture aspect. The third was the pure picture aspect the casting of a picture on the mind's eye. And uh, ever since their work, the reason we've gone into a lot of free verse, different from the kind that Bob likes, <laughs> uh, has been the emphasis on the picture aspect. And uh, especially in the 20th century, there has been a lot of translation <coughs> from many languages into English, and from English into many languages. And the poetry that translates the best is the poetry that has pictures in it and does not depend on the sound and doesn't depend on the rhymes, but just depends on the pure picture. So there's been more and more of a tendency to develop an international poetry style which uh, doesn't, which is free verse, that is open verse, that doesn't have a 
recurrent uh, meter. It doesn't have recurrent rhyme, but has harder and harder, clearer and clearer pictures. Yes. I understand that. Yeah. And we, myself, also greatly appreciate free advice, especially mm -hmm. that imagery of modern poetry yes. that Pound and his group calls would be hard and clear, or yes. concrete and very precise. Yes. Maybe we can <coughs> show some examples of that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. First, let us go to your poem that you propose to present. On that subject. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I will take off my coat because that is how I work when teaching the deaf. <laughs> my ears are deaf, but still I seem to hear sweet nights with music and the songs of men. For I have learned from fancies other than how written words can thrill the inner ear, just as they move the heart. And so for me, words also seem to ring out loud and free. In silent study, I have learned to tell each sacred shade of meaning and to hear a magic harmony at once sincere that somehow notes the tinkle of a bow, the cooing of a dove, the swish of leaves, the raindrops putter potter on the eaves, the lover's sigh and drumming of guitar. And if I choose the rustle of a star, mm -hmm. so, so then it becomes a hand dance also. And that's what I mean to say, even without rhythm and rhyme, deaf people have a particular enjoyment of poetry. Uh -huh. To them, it is their form of music. Uh -huh. Painting pictures in the air. Hey, for example, mm -hmm. we take a few short haiku poems. Mm. Are these yours? First, so the, no, no. Well, I'm quoting from other poets. performance of uh, haiku then becomes a invention of a pantomime. So it's another, actually transferred into another art form like dance or pantomime.
That's really clear. That's really clear. For yeah, the time we could throw several more short uh -huh. ones. Yeah. Could, would you like to try interpreting some haikus that I wrote? <laughs> I can't. I lost part the gray boy. What? If I can't, I'll ask Pat Gray Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, first one by Jack Kerouac. Kerouac was a uh, very good writer uh, who was influenced by haiku and by Oriental meditation and uh, uh, but had a good ear but also had a very good eye. In my medicine cabinet, the winter fly has died of old age. I'll write it down. Yeah, uh, but is there something to write? Oh, does this get a race? I mean, just a race also. How did he get the old? Uh, well, yeah, how, did, the how, did he, how did he sign old age? What was the sign for old age? Uh, mm, time has passed. We have to have that. Yeah, we have to throw time. We don't want to use too many signs. For mm -hmm. like five years pass or change, change, winter comes. Mm. Well, we have to work on things like this. Yeah. All right. Mm, poets who work on their poems revise, revise, revise. And even when reciting, they often have to rehearse. We have to do the same. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Let's try one of mine. Uh, in, I'll, I'll write it down. Well, this is a great, this is a great invention. <laughs> a whiteboard instead of a blackboard. No. From bird brain.
So that's a big picture. Lots of space in the picture. Is that, a, is that visible? I mean, is that uh, clear as a visible picture? So that, that was in the half light of dawn under the star Pleiades, a few mm -hmm. birds wobble. Half light. Mm -hmm. That's the half light. Mm -hmm. Dawn. Stars. Stars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the uh, the ambition of a good poet is to be able to write something that is visually sharp and clear. And uh, when I am writing, uh, I'm partly because I have experience of helping translate my own poetry into many different languages. I become more and more conscious of the fact that you can't, the only thing you can translate is pictures. The only thing you can translate completely is a picture. You can't translate the wit of the language or puns, or, and you can't translate rhyme, and you, but you can translate the picture. So that becomes the test of poetry for me. So uh, in, a, it's, in a funny way, it's fortunate that modern poetry uh, is the closest verbal formulation uh, to what might be useful for people who are deaf. Uh, with modern poetry, there. There's, uh, the sound is lost, but the main thrust is picture. Very cool. Like mm, new movies. Yeah. The European directors came yeah. up with a new hard and clear imagery in movies. Yes. And the same principle, that's very do true. Mo yeah. Do most of the people here know that about the development of modern poetry? Maybe we should give maybe uh, four minutes of history. Would that be useful? Yes. So. We found something else very interesting about deaf people and our language of science. Back in the 19, we're talking about the 1950s, 1958, Pat Graeber was a student at Canada College. That time we were studying Greek plays in humanities program. We were teaching elder book to the freshman class, and after two months, the class said, why don't we give that play? God, that, I'd never given a Greek drama before. However, another professor named Leonard Saga and I got together and he said, first we will have to translate the play into science. Mm -hmm. So we worked on that for a month translating it and writing it in no typhonal form, which was really probably would call it uh, <coughs> Pinsman Ingus or something like that. But, but now, picture, picture signs, was, picture signs. Oh, oh, very, I will show you what I'm talking about, yeah. yes. Very pictorial, mm. made for the deaf performer who would have only a few weeks time for a rehearsal to memorize the lines without struggling with meanings and things like that. Well, we printed the script 
picked the calf, run on with rehearsals, and we saw we found remarkable phenomenon. In the Greek plays, the chorus was first composed of 15 members that provide the mood music, mm, like you have a movie score. Mm. They also provide the element of dance movement to show the changing emotions within the play. We find that in Greek uh, choruses they have strophe and antistrophe, or movement and opposite movement, point and counterpoint. Mm. So sometimes if they were happy, and they would be praising into the skies. Uh, at the time they were fearful. Uh, uh, would be the reverse movement. We found in translating it for four sign language, that same thing came out beautifully in signs. I'll give an example. Mm. Yeah, it erases so silently. One of the lines in the second choral ode in Adipus. <coughs> and Apollo will follow him with lightning bolts that bring fire and surround and talk. Mm. I'm sorry, I didn't do it yet. My hand movements now, and Apollo will follow him with rattling bolts that bring fire and surround and talk. Now we have a movement going away from the body. Follow him with rattling bolts, downward movement. That bring fire and surround and so it goes in the reverse direction. Marvelous thing that happens often in the strophe and antistrophe and the chorus of 15 members doing that often with the movement and signs always steals the song. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, in the, it always the, the actual uh, hidden physical meaning in picture always steals the show in poetry like that. I will show you another <clears throat> example. Another example is to have the printed text from the book and the sign language of version.
يقول حول باول فريا في ساند إز سفاست ذاد أب آل تاليفن با في سانينج وي هاف نو بيكسل وي تشينج إت يا إت سيمز فيري أبستراكت إت سيمز أولموست إمبوسيبل تو ترانسليت And he uh, falls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's go here. <laughs> what is your favorite Shakespeare for signing? <laughs> no, man, it's very difficult to choose. Like naming my favorite baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> or okay. a movie, uh, or a book. Okay, well, what, uh, is, what is the most vivid uh, Shakespeare signing? I don't know. There are many things. Uh, maybe too long to do. Mark Anthony, the funeral or raven, for example. Uh -huh. uh, Friends you could do that if you wanted the wrong one, yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's some piece of it. Or, or we could do part of Hamlet's to be or not well, to be. Yeah. I immediately wonder what can you do with the <laughs> abstract idea of to be or not to be. The rest of it is uh, slings and arrows of outrageous <laughs> fortune, but what about the, fr the main phrase, to be or not to be? How would you translate that? Because that's not a picture. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. We often yeah. discuss that in class with students. Yeah. What is Hamlet's problem? Abstraction. Hamlet's problem seems to be abstraction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let me try. <laughs> is it a uh, question of life and death? A question of must he act? Kill his father? Or your good Christian <laughs> follow the laws of the state and so on. Yeah. Oh, there's many variations. Sometimes the director wants to be or not to be. Another director says to be or not to do, to act. Uh. Another more poetic way is to be. Or not to be. But what, what does this mean it's in terms of being? To live. To live. Ah. To live. Ah. To live. Or not to live. Okay. What is the root? That is the question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is the, let, let us say, the, the sign language etymology, or the origin of that gesture for to live? That's really interesting. To live. The letter L. Oh, L. Well, this is life. Yeah. Uh, it falls from you like from the green fuse <laughs> that Dolly Thomas talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Life from his life. Yeah. Yeah. And this would be the reverse, a uh, reverse uh -huh. movement. Yeah. That's the thing that we try to do in sign language translation. That's universally yeah. understood, that gesture? As life? That's just a. No, he says no. <laughs> Well, our sign language is not universal. No, well, no, I mean, for those, for those of you who use this particular ALS. ASL? ASL, yeah. <coughs> that particular sign is... So how would he sign? He sign eat, sleep. Those signs are easy to understand. And all over the world might be understood. <coughs> Many signs that 
deaf people are used in other countries are not yeah. understood. Well, this particular sign, to live. Signs like this. Yes. Yes. But with the L, the, that's an L. With an L, no. Uh -huh. hard, I mean, at the test. So your, your to live would also include patting the heart? Uh-huh. So there would be some variety <coughs> in the translation into the sign language. A variation from signer to signer. Same as spoken language. Yes. Mm -mm. yes. Uh, same as translation. Your poetry spoken in French wouldn't have the same meaning and effect. Same yeah. thing. Uh, same thing. Uh, yeah. mm -mm. So what is the most uh, effective and famous poem known in your sign language? What's the biggest, the biggest hit? What's the biggest hit? The biggest hit. The Star Spangled Banner. Really? Mm -hmm. Because of the well, vividness? Well, we say it every day. Long <laughs> ago in school, it used to be sung. Uh -huh. It used to be sung in the classrooms until it was forbidden. <laughs> but that's probably most well known. Mm -hmm. It is. For the deaf people. Is that true? What are the poems? Mm. Why, why is that? Because it's still used? Yeah. Mm. Maybe we like to see that in yeah. science. Yes. No, I'm anti-patriotic. <laughs> I can read after singing. After. We don't have to stand up. <laughs> you can stay seated. Yeah. But I've always believed that after saying that, Song by Robert Murrow in Yankee Stadium before every game. By now, all deaf people can read the lips for the words. Look, <laughs> and the camera focuses on the flag, and then on the speaker's lips. Oh, say, can you see? It's nice, but it's nothing like a sign. <laughs> so what would the sign go? Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's Last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the power of sign over the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming, and the rockets were there, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night. That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? How would you, how would you, how would you sign out, we shall overcome? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that? Right. Do you know that? <coughs> Have you ever worked that one out? We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Tiger, Tiger? I, I, I know that you broke that out. <laughs> the great Tiger, Tiger. Tiger, Tiger. Yeah. I have a, I have a version that I sing. <laughs> But there's no point in it. I'd rather see it. Thank you. <laughs>
I'd rather see it in picture. Well, there's, a ver there's one thing about the sung version or about the metrical version which probably could be adapted to deaf language, which is the fact that the, uh, the meter of the tiger is based on the heartbeat. Have you thought of that as far as that poem? That's interesting. Yeah. Because, uh, 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 tiger. Uh, because tiger. The, Burning bright tiger, yeah, tiger, tiger. burning You bright. will do the uh, the beat. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> tiger, tiger, burning bright through the forest of the night. What a mortal hand the night. Death frame thy fearful symmetry. In what distant deeps and skies point the fire of your eyes? What is there we aspire? What the hand dare seed of the fire? And what soda and what art could twist the sinews of your heart? And when your heart began to beat, what for him for thy dread sea? What the ham? What the chain? From what furnace came thy brain? What the anvil? What for grasp? Terror's deadly terror's clasp. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears. <laughs> Did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Targa, targa, burning bright through the forest of the night. What immortal hand and I Death framed thy fearful symmetry. Is that, is that a poem that is well? Is that a poem that is well known among the deaf? Well, I think because of the National Theater of the Deaf, which um, uh, part. Help to found Pat Grable way back in 1967. They have won national and international acclaim all over the world. More than that, I really believe that it was the National Theatre of the Deaf that is the catalyst to worldwide acceptance of sign language as uh, many Standard thing. So they have carried poems like that all over the world, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the uh, main uh, poems that have been uh, worked out into sign language? What are the most popular?